Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. We'll take a look at Bitcoin today, guys. We've seen some positive movement in the crypto space, and uh, it looks like Bitcoin right now is trading in around 42800 yesterday, and now we're already at 44700 for the King Crypto. Now, this has definitely created some movement in the crypto space. This is Bitcoin on the hourly, uh, but let me throw it back on the daily here for a second. So uh, some metrics that we should be paying attention to at this moment in time, of course, getting up above this level in and around here when we were just trading sideways for a few days. Of course, Bitcoin price does have to get above 49,000, roughly 49,000 per coin before we actually can assume that the bullish trajectory will continue. So Still a little bit of work to do. Nevertheless, uh, the Bitcoin crypto is uh, looking very, very nice. Again, let me throw that back on the hourly. And you guys can see an uninterrupted pattern here of uh, bullish momentum with uh, you know a bit of a retrace and now moving to the upside. So we're going to keep an eye on that today, see how that works out for the rest of the crypto space. As you guys can see, the market cap right now has gone up 1.71 trillion. So we're back in and around uh, the amount when we originally saw Bitcoin moving a few weeks ago, 24-hour volume is up to almost by 30%. Bitcoin dominance, though, still holding at 51.4. So Bitcoin is still leading the charge, still maintaining dominance over the altcoins. You guys can see here, neutral sentiment is slowly rising uh, higher in the 50s now than it was uh, a few days ago. And so Bitcoin is up 4.3%. We got Ethereum up 266 uh, BNB coin is up 4.58. Solana is up 6.31. XRP up 2.22%. Uh, and so on and so forth. Cardano is actually doing uh, quite well too. 11.48%. So most of the altcoins as well are also in the green. And uh, as you guys noticed, uh, probably XRP not faring as well as some of these other altcoins. Uh, nevertheless, let's just take a look at the chart right now. XRP, well, moving up a little bit. Right now we're at about 51, 2.512. So XRP still doing its thing, still working its way to the upside. Zooming out here on the XRP chart, you guys can see that Nike swoosh pattern still playing out. We're not really going below uh, any kind of concerning dip down going below that Nike swoosh pattern. So we're still maintaining that pattern. And it's looking as though the whales are also noticing this. Tony Edward brought this to our attention. Headline, XRP price is down for the month. So why are whales opening bullish leverage positions? Well, obviously the answer is because whales can read the charts. And guys, I gotta say, this isn't my first rodeo either. If you're interested in what I'm trading, I've been doing this for 13 years. I started in stocks. Now I'm pretty much full-time crypto. I still do hold stock positions. You can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel. I'm gonna have a live Q and A session tomorrow for all my Patreon subscribers, but I'm opening up my portfolio. I'm showing you guys exactly what I'm trading, how much, how much money I'm putting into these particular cryptocurrencies. That is the $10,000 plus portfolio that I have for my patrons. It's up to 11,000 and change right now but it is only five dollars a month if you guys are interested tony here bringing this up because charts yeah that is exactly what we need to be paying attention to and you know when your favorite crypto or whatever crypto doesn't even have to be your favorite when a coin is down this is when you should be paying attention especially in a bullish space like this and especially you know if this is not your first rodeo you know these coins will have their time in the sun xrp usually rallies in the euphoria phase so even though the token has experienced a 20 percent decline in 2024 and it currently is approaching its lowest daily close since October 23. Uh, despite the challenging price performance, prominent traders at the OKX exchange heavily favor long buy leverage positions for XRP. So let me just show you guys this chart here. I showed you guys uh, a similar one from the Bitru exchange. Given the recent events surrounding XRP and Ripple, investors might expect bearish sentiment for top traders. However, the trend has been the opposite according to long to short ratios. The long to short ratio uh, consolidation derivatives position across perpetual and quarterly futures contracts offering insight into the positions of whales and arbitrage desks. So this is what the metrics are for top traders in the space from the OKX exchange, but also from the Binance exchange too. We're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of positions favoring longs. Noticeably, the top traders at OKX present 7.2x favoring longs uh, in the last 30 days, a significant shift from the 1.6x factor on February the 1st. Uh, and then from Binance, we're seeing that uh, also healthy 2x up from the 1.8x from February the 1st. So those are just some of the metrics here regarding XRP positions. These are actually metrics on chain, guys. So, you know, nobody's questioning whether this is or is not. People are holding XRP and they're getting into the positions now because they realize tomorrow might be too late. Anyway, wanted to thank uh, Tony Edward for posting that. I've got an, uh, an update too on the Chris Larson XRP hack. Hacking 
is a leading cryptocurrency security firm. And they've just recently uncovered evidence uh, suggesting that this could have been uh, an inside job. This one courtesy of Michael Branch here. So hack and a leading cryptocurrency security firm has uncovered evidence suggesting an inside job in the recent hacking of Ripple co-founder and chairman Chris Larson's personal wallets. The sophisticated breach led to a loss of 213 million XRP. We talked about that a little last week. On January the 31st, the breach not only startled the crypto community with its scale, but also with its duration, lasting an unconventional 11 hours and 11 minutes, leading the investigation. Uh, Hacking's uh, head here, Dimitro uh, Yamazovich, uh, provided insight into the findings. And here's what he said, okay? Our team embarked on a comprehensive investigation uncovering a network of transactions that suggest a more intricate involvement within Ripple's own infrastructure. So that is a little disconcerting if somebody uh, within Ripple did, in fact, uh, orchestrate this hack. The initial phase of Hacken's analysis revealed that the funds uh, from the compromised red wallet were distributed to eight different wallets before funneled into accounts at various centralized exchanges. And so there's just, uh, again, a diagram of that. Uh, a critical piece of the puzzle was an, a $64 million transaction to a new address. And Hacken is saying, our investigation reveals that the new address involves a $64 million transaction, is directly connected with the XRP pack of addresses, and had some outgoing and incoming transactions between them. Notably, it also engages with wallets tied to transfers of stolen funds. Oh my goodness, somebody's about to get fired. Remarkably, a large position of stolen funds was traced to various exchange addresses by Hacken. Among those transactions were uh, some Kraken addresses identified as playing a pivotal role in the movement of funds. Hacken's investigation also brought a light to the historical connection of this uh, particular wallet with ties to XRP that predates the hacking incident. So um, I'm guessing they're going to look into this further and uh, perhaps... There's going to be some uncomfortable decisions to be made over there at Ripple. Anyway, I wanted to thank Michael for giving us that, that update there. Of course, this is not good in the eyes of, uh, you know, the lawmakers in the U.S. already trying to tamp down crypto with an iron fist. We do not want this. So, you know, having these types of stories is not great for us. But alas, here we are. Michael Branch with another one here. Maxine Waters saying this just yesterday. Apparently a stablecoin bill, guys is on the table. It's ready to go. Maxine Waters says lawmakers are very, very close to finalizing stablecoin bill regulations here in the United States. She said in an interview on Wednesday that a deal on the stablecoin bill is nearly complete. Uh, what happened? Well, Waters, speaking with Politico on February the 7th, said we're working on stablecoins. We're getting very close. We are very, very close. Very close. That is the That is the exact quote there. Lawmakers in the United States are said to be nearing a decision on a much-anticipated bill that would regulate stablecoins. This comes after several months of discussion with the heads of the Financial Services Committee, Patrick McHenry. At the heart of these discussions is how much uh, power the Federal Reserve should have over stablecoins, including the ability to make rules about how they are issued. Now, of course, this is a very contentious uh, topic because... We have stable coins. We have privately issued stable coins in the space like USDC and Tether's USDT. But then, you know, there's this issue. There's this talk, perhaps, depending on who becomes president of, uh, you know, perhaps a CBDC entering uh, the arena in the United States, entering the space and uh, being used for transactions at the retail level. So, you know, if that is the case, I mean... I'm sure some administrations want to usher in CBDCs, others do not. Again, don't want to get too political, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, stablecoins pose a threat, and so, you know, this is why these guys are really going after them and uh, making it their priority, too, to go after stablecoins. I mean, XRP, you know, all these other cryptocurrencies, this is just kind of noise in terms of the grander scheme of things. I mean, XRP, they had their own uh, issues uh, with the SEC for different reasons because they're challenging the legacy banking system. And so this is why we saw XRP in court, and this is why we saw XRP get the clarity it got before all these other cryptocurrencies. But really, guys, it's going to be the stablecoins that we have to pay very, very close attention to. So anyway, some uh, interesting news. Wondering uh, how soon. Very, very close. I'm wondering what that means. This week, next week, who knows? We're going to keep an eye on this. Wanted to thank Michael for posting that. Perry Ann Boring is also making the rounds. Sento Sumo Saba posting this. Your intellectual dishonesty, Senator Warren, is evident to the world. Money laundering, cryptocurrencies are logged on an unadulterable public ledger. It's the dumbest thing you could possibly do. Perry Ann Boring knows her stuff. A clip of her criticizing Senator Warren and her approach to crypto regs. Yeah, well, let's talk about what's actually happening. So Senator Elizabeth Warren, she has self-proclaimed herself as the, the head of the anti-crypto army. 
I'm not sure if there's any official members of the anti-crypto army, but it's this is all over her uh, campaign page. Um, so she likes to promote it for political purposes. So she introduced a bill, S2669, it's called the Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act. This bill, she's represented it. So this is what she's 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 doing. If you ever watch any of the hearings, the, the Senate hearings, uh, the things she's talking about, I see her give statements or speeches. She she loves to political theater is like her her favorite pastime. She's a master at it. Um she's going around saying that cryptocurrencies have an AML problem. She is perpetuating that narrative. Um, and she will use any tools she has to to try to prove that point. Of course, we know that is absolutely retarded because cryptocurrencies are all logged on a public ledger. And if you were trying to conceal your financial tracks, literally the, the dumbest thing you could possibly do is print them on an unalterable and public ledger. Criminals are not flocking to cryptocurrency for that exact reason. It is the dumbest thing you could possibly do. I can't even believe that uh, Senator Warren here is proclaiming that she is the head of the anti-crypto army, something that nobody wants to be a part of. <laughs> anyway, we wanted to thank Sento Sumo Saba for bringing us that clip. Uh, of course, you know, it's the SEC's mandate, and we do know the connection between Gary Gensler and Elizabeth Warren. If you guys don't remember a few months back, uh, it was pretty clear that uh, Warren was feeding Gensler the answers to the questions she wanted him to answer when he was in front of the house. I don't know if I have the video uh, easily accessible, but I'll try to find it and I'll link it up here if I can find it. Dark Horse here posting this. The SEC officially made over $4.9 billion in 2023 with 501 enforcements, 102 million per case on average. It was a record amount with also an increase of 133 officers. So if Ripple gets fined $3 billion, 24, or rather 2024 will be a record year with 50 or 60%, excuse me, of last year's earnings cleared in one case and one case alone. Gary Gensler, how much was given back to investors in 2023? So keeping him honest, I mean, you know, everybody uh, continuing to ask these questions here. And uh, here's just some uh, supporting evidence to that fact. Wanted to thank Dark Horse just for posting that. It is unfortunate. We do know that, uh, you know, the crypto industry is, uh, it's, it's taking so long in the U.S. to get sorted out. Uh, and, and, you know, I think, you know, part of the problem is conflating the idea of making money in a spec market and the real world utility. I don't think people can really separate those two. And I think that, uh, you know, the ecosystem is suffering because of that. XRP drops, uh, you know, reminding us, okay, new Ripple article on the homepage, the emerging tokenized economy. Guys, tokenization, a huge part of this. Uh, and here's the article. I'm not going to read it over for you guys. This is just part one, uh, but I will link it in the description of the video. Some highlights, though. At the end of 2020, Project Guardian had completed its first live trades, believed to be the first time a major bank had tokenized deposits on a public blockchain. Uh, two Ripple partners were involved, DBS Bank and SBI Digital Holdings. Remember, Polygon founder Sandeep Nawal uh, was invited to Ripple Swell in 2023. Tokenized assets could represent $16 trillion of business. Uh, that's a business opportunity by 2023. In November of 2023, Ripple partner uh, HSBC announced that the company will work with Metaco to develop digital asset custody services. And you guys know just last year, Metaco was purchased by Ripple. So a big strategic move for Ripple for the tokenization business. Singapore's DBS Bank issued a tokenized bond on its digital platform. And Real World Assets launched mortgage-backed stable coins on the XRP ledger. So some new use cases that were brought to our attention back in 2023. But guys, it's going to be the tokenization of everything. This is what's going to get XRP demand really, really high. Mr. Man bringing this to our attention, okay? XRP's liquidity is projected to play a pivotal role in 2025 with estimates suggesting a substantial increase in trading volume. Its use as a bridge currency and Ripple's on-demand liquidity solution is expected to fuel efficient cross-border transactions, making it an attractive option for financial institutions and contributing to its potential for significant growth. Marcus Infanger here from 2023, he explains it very, very well. And I think 2025 is kind of the ultimate goal, guys. I think we're going to start to see that ramp up in 2024. And I still do think that, uh, you know, the bull run, the spec run, the liquidity that we're going to see for XRP during this bull run could, in fact, help as that catalyst for XRP to really get off the ground for meaningful real world utility. But I'm going to let Marcus Infanger explain tokenization and how big, again, how big this is going to get. We at Ripple, uh, with our flagship product, on-demand liquidity, we're literally harnessing 
billions of dollars of extra P liquidity to facilitate cross-border payments in a couple of seconds from, say, the US to Mexico instead of your two, three days like in legacy systems. Um, so really sur solving a, a massive pain point in this world, which is how money moves around the world. And, and these are use cases that can scale in the trillions. So I think the future of crypto liquidity uh, will be shifting more towards solving real world problems as opposed to just speculation. You know, I think everybody would agree most of the crypto liquidity right now uh, serves sort of the use case of speculation, fueled by incentives and so forth, and not denouncing that. I think you know, it empowers the industry to really innovate. Um, however, I think as, the, you know, as, as, as crypto matures and lifts up to its full potential, I think this notion of real uh, world utility will become increasingly more relevant. So crypto has to mature first, and uh, that's when we're going to see the relevancy when it comes to liquidity. But this is just Marcus and Fanger, again, from 2023, discussing billions of dollars of XRP liquidity. That's what's going to really move the space. And, uh, you know, he, he was even saying that right now the liquidity that we're seeing is based on uh, speculation. And really, the speculative price moves of a lot of these cryptocurrencies. Of course, in a bull run, we do see more liquidity. We do see more interest. We do see, uh, you know, the plebe class, retail traders, you and I, getting excited about crypto. And this is what gets uh, more money pouring into the space. You know, this market cap at the height of the last bull run was at uh, $3 trillion. So, you know, that could exceed that by leaps and bounds. We could go to $10 trillion. Some estimates have said $10 trillion. So, you know, that... Uh, in conjunction with, uh, you know, how we're going to see a tokenized economy moving down the road. This could, in fact, I'm going to say it again, uh, really help develop the real world utility use cases for Ripple and XRP, making the XRP cryptocurrency potentially worth even more than if it was just a spec bull run moving to, uh, you know, just based on speculative supply and demand to a new all time high. Uh, it's one hypothesis. It is one theory. Guys, we also got this, though. 2025, another uh, another interesting observation here coming from the Crypto Hulk. 2025 Ripple XRP chosen to be the liquidity provider for the European Union. Now, check this out, okay? He brings to our attention this uh, this partnership here. B2C2, which is a Ripple partner, gains Luxembourg virtual asset license as EU's crypto rules are set to kick in. So the liquidity provider is expanding into Luxembourg in a bid to widen the EU presence in six months after gaining a license to operate in France. And so liquidity provider B2C2 secured regulatory approval in Luxembourg as a virtual asset service provider as the London-based firm looks to expand its presence in the European Union. Approval allows B2C2 to offer over-the-counter spot crypto services to institutional clients. It becomes the 12th VASP to register Luxembourg's Commission de Surveillance uh, du Secteur Financier uh, public register. The company already has licenses from France's Autorité des Marchés Financiers uh, acquired when it was bought by Paris-based Wharton in August of last year. But guys, interesting to note down here that uh, Japanese financial group SBI Holdings acquired B2C2 in the year 2020. So just uh, four years ago, it was already acquired by SBI Holdings, which we know is already a major Ripple partner. And that was the first major step to owning a crypto trading firm. So the other thing we should note here too, very bullish on Ripple, very bullish on XRP. The, uh, the CEO specifically, this was back from February of 2019. So five years ago, the SBI CEO said every bank in Japan will use Ripple's XRP by 2025. Now we're seeing moves like this, okay? The ecosystem is growing. You know, every single day I come on here and talk about all the partnerships, how we're seeing that web expand, how Ripple has been getting their tentacles in pretty much every single country on planet Earth, or trying to at least. Well, this B2C2 partnership also looking very, very promising. And I mean, if we do see XRP utility by 2025 in a real world capacity, when the market does top out, that seems like a perfect storm. So some interesting observations here with regards to, uh, you know, this particular region of the world, in this case, the EU. So wanted to thank Crypto Hulk for posting that. Also, guys, wanted to mention this. Going back to the X platform and their uh, AI protocol, Grok, it has identified occasions when Ripple's executives have been bullish on XRP, specifically naming it an important currency, a world reserve currency or something similar. It was originally tweeted out by Digital Asset Investor, but guys, check this out. Brad Garlinghouse in 2018, in an interview with CNBC, 
at one point, he did say, and guys, this is AI just kind of scouring the internet and finding the uh, the times when this occurred. I think the role of digital assets like XRP is really to be a bridge currency to enable a tremendous amount of efficiency and really allow the globalization of payments in a way that has never been done before. In another 2018 interview, Garlinghouse did state, I think that the long-term value of any digital asset is going to be derived from the utility it delivers. And XRP has a lot of utility in terms of solving a multi-trillion dollar problem. Chris Larson uh, then said in 2018, XRP is the only digital asset with a clear institutional use case designed to solve a multi-trillion dollar problem. The global payment and liquidity challenges that banks, payment providers, and corporates face uh, in, again in 2018. Larson did say, we think that XRP has a real chance of being a global digital currency that is used by financial institutions and consumers alike. And then Ashish Birla in 2018, he also mentioned uh, XRP is uniquely positioned to solve a multi-trillion dollar problem and we believe it has the potential to become a global standard for digital assets and payments. Not to mention that Brad Garlinghouse also in 2018. I'm just going to add my two cents here because I do remember a clip from a panel, a presentation he was doing in South Korea that he did actually call XRP a global reserve currency. So guys, that's the result from Grok AI where we're seeing this exact thing. XRP could be used in mass quantities by 2025. It's all lining up to become a reality, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel, guys. We're almost at 100,000. Getting so close. I'm going to be giving away two Ledger Nanos by early April, but you do have to be subscribed to win, so please subscribe now. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.